Hi friends, in this session we'll discuss some secrets of FRM part 1 exam and knowing these secrets can be a game changer for you. So make sure you understand these points which we will discuss here in this video and you should apply the learning of this video in your exam and definitely you'll be able to do good. So all the best from my side. So let's start up with our first point. The first is like remember this. FRM exam is difficult for everyone. It doesn't matter how well prepared you are. Maybe you are the best. You are the, in top of line. Okay. Still doesn't matter. You will feel that exam is difficult. When you sit for the exam, the feel of exam is difficult. So don't bother about it. When you are like assuming you are in the, your exam hall and you are appearing for exam. So don't bother about the difficulty level you are feeling. Remember, if the exam is difficult for you, assuming you are a very well prepared candidate, it is difficult for every other candidate. Okay, so you don't have to bother about the difficulty level. I have seen this happening with a lot of students. The so students who score really high in mock test suddenly feel pressure in exam because they go with the perception that okay, they are doing amazing in mock test. Say maybe scoring 90% in mock test. And when they see in the exam that they are unable to solve uh, any question, say back to back 10 questions in exam. So they get confused, they get underconfident and they ruin their exam. And this should not happen with you. Make sure you are confident. Understand this exam is difficult for everyone, for you and for all the other candidates. Generally, the only people who feel exam is very easy. I'm saying the very easy are the students who are not at all prepared or not well prepared because they are unable to understand some tricks in those questions. And that's why they solve question using their basic method and then they make mistakes. So if you are feeling exam very easy, remember I'm saying very easy, then there is a problem. But if you are well prepared, you will feel exam as difficult. Okay. So know this point. The next is, uh, with this difficulty in exam, you have to also remember one thing. Difficulty in exam is very different from difficulty in passing. So passing exam is relatively easy. Why? Because you will get approximately 35 to 40 percent result. And 35 to 40 percent result is really good considering FRM exam. Why? Because in FRM exam, uh, at least 20 to 30 percent, according to like my analysis, at least 20 to 30 percent students come prepared. Okay, they are not very well prepared. So you are mostly battling in between, uh, say, 60 percent students. And you are trying to 60 or 70 percent students and you are trying to get into the 40 percent so getting into 40 percent out of those 60 percent is still manageable okay so if you are able to manage your confidence stay calm and relax and everything you will be able to do good in your exam next is time management so a lot of students are like worried about how they will manage time in the exam so first of all you get approximately 2.5 minutes per question in your exam so my suggestion is don't bother about time management as such so manage about solving exam in within time uh, at this point like in your revision schedule or in your preparation schedule maybe you are appearing for exam on 10th or 12th or 14th so don't bother about the time management issue because i've never seen students complaining about the time management part which is like happens in cfa exam because sometimes like in cfa you get like uh, short time for each question and uh, session one is really long compared to uh, the normal session the session two Okay, so this is not the case with the FRM exam. Most of the students are able to manage their exam within time. You should expect approximately 90 to 95 questions. Uh, you will be able to manage or solve these many questions in time, which is decent. So don't try to go for 100% question in like your time. So it is not going to happen. But 90 to 95 questions in four hours is good enough for you. So don't bother about it. Even if you are able to manage 85 to 90 questions, good for you. So it is still like uh, you can still score uh, all Q1s even with, like, by solving 90 questions properly. Now here the suggestion is, so instead of outrightly leaving, so just take scenario. So you start your exam from the question number one and you reach to question number 90 and your four hours are over. And you leave the rest of the 10 questions because exam will get automatically submitted and you lose points on those questions. So this should not happen with you. Now, what do you have to do when you are solving your exam from the beginning itself? Take this call. Okay. So if you feel that question is from very unknown area, skip it, mark random question, like simply randomly tick that particular question and move on to waste your time in these questions. So understand this, we will lose like 
in most of the cases we will lose 10 questions so instead of outrightly dropping or leaving the last 10 questions which is possible right? so last 10 questions are say very easy and you are leaving those 10 questions and so instead of doing this make sure that in between whenever you see very difficult question or very lengthy question so even if you are comfortable with that question or the concept if you think like the question will take a lot of time to calculate then drop that question and move on don't bother about those questions one more suggestion here generally students who miss or who are unable to solve say 80 to 85 questions in exam are those students who get stuck in one question and in this case like in getting stuck in one question happens mostly with the well prepared students one they uh, and uh, when they solve the question they get wrong answer so say you got the binomial question say question number 14 is binomial you solve that question you spend say three four minutes and now you got the answer but the answer is not matching with the option now there is a problem so you will start checking your question again your, your answer again like what, what mistake you made this is complete wastage of time don't do this don't get into that ego fight okay i know this concept and i'm going to solve this concept no matter uh, so solve this question no matter what this will ruin your exam if you get wrong answer in the first instance just tick random answer and move on that greed to correct that question will waste your time and it will cost you two or three extra questions so ultimately every question counts for equal marks so solving big question is not going to give us any, any extra points so save your time in these particular aspects so first two points are over now this is very typical discussion theory versus numerical i get a lot of questions in this specifically in this period like how many theory questions we can expect or how many numericals we can expect because sometimes students are very comfortable with the theory so they want theory to be more and sometimes students who are uh, comfortable with numerical they want numerical to be more now in examination you can expect approximately 40 percent exam on numerical it can be less but i'm giving you the decent or the reasonable number so 40 percent exam will be on numerical and rest of the exam the 60 percent exam will be theory now here in this numerical if you are well prepared you will be able to manage 35 questions 35 percent i yeah 35 percent is also good enough okay so you will be able to manage this out of 40 percent you will be able to manage 35 percent questions 5% questions in this numerical part will be difficult. So understand it. Uh, don't try to solve question if it is very unknown to you. Randomly take it and move on. Then in theory question, approximately 60% you will get theory questions. Out of this, as per my analysis or understanding, 20 should be direct questions. Direct questions as in the easily manageable questions. Now here, these questions comes from very typical topics. For example, the topics like uh, financial disasters, right? So in financial disasters, we have cases. So in case studies, there is no possibility of interpretation from your side. So whatever happened, happened. So you will get direct question on these type of topics. Uh, then we also have the topic on 2007 financial crisis, right? So on these topics or financial disaster like topics or operational risk, credit risk from the book four, uh, stress testing or uh, country risk from book four. So from these chapters, you can expect direct type of questions. Okay. So again, this is based on my analysis because these topics are not uh, like that where you have the possibility of interpretation. Okay. Interpretation is not possible here, but remaining 40% of this 60%, so 20% manageable. I'm not saying easy, manageable. 40% will be very difficult, very difficult as in, in these questions, in these 40% questions, your approach should be. And this approach should be applicable or applied to all the theory questions, not applicable for numerical questions, but all theory questions. So in these 40% questions specifically, you have to make sure you eliminate two options. And you will get confused. So most of the, this is based on students feedback. So you will get confused between the two options. So which one is the correct? So tick one option. There is no uh, solution to this problem. Like, okay so out of four options you are unable to eliminate you are able to eliminate two options now you are left with two options you are finding these two options plausible there is no way to confirm that whatever you are taking is the correct so don't waste your time in this particular step whatever you think is the best option tick it and move on so the possibility is you will be able to stick with the 70 percent accuracy because now you eliminated two and you have two best options remaining eliminating two is really easy Selecting best from the remaining two is very difficult. Okay. Now these two, which you are finding uh, very plausible or manageable. So 
these options comes like so these are very uh, similar type of options okay so you have to make sure you are taking the best and moving on then we have next is the uh, fear management okay okay one more thing this particular strategy you can also opt with the uh, easy questions easy theory questions because what happens if you have say question which one of the following statement is correct you read the statement a and you find that statement correct in exam in most of the cases you will see which one of the following statement is most likely to be correct okay or most correct so most accurate most correct means maybe there are two options which are correct but out of these two or the out of those four options one is more correct so make sure you read all four options and then you select the best option even for these easy easy questions okay this will be my this is the recommendation then the fear management this happens with a lot of students again those who are very well prepared or well prepared students so, so back to back you will see like you are unable to solve say uh, you start your exam um back to back say seven questions went and you are unable to confirm the right answer so you are not very confident about say first seven questions first 10 questions uh you are solved you solved okay now what happens after this the students who are very well prepared they come with the perception that okay their exam will be very good and when they see they are unable to tick the right answer or confirm the right answer in first 10 questions or maybe in between 10 questions it can happen in between also this creates problem this takes your confidence down this creates fear so you have to understand if these questions are difficult to tackle for you these questions are difficult to tackle for almost everyone so don't bother about it manage your fear focus on one question at a time solve it move on solve the second question solve it move on and you have to follow the strategy keep telling yourself like this was my strategy when i appeared for uh, my frm exam like if this question this is what i used to tell myself sitting in the exam if i am unable to solve this question most of the students won't be able to solve this question i used to tell it myself so that my confidence is in that okay and you should also opt this strategy again it depends on uh, if you are very confident person you don't fall for all these fears and all so you don't need to but for most of the students the strategy should work so try this okay now the fear management then next formula revision okay in fear management i just missed one point in time management uh, i'll just complete that point in time management ideal time management is in first hour 20 questions second hour 25 questions third hour 25 questions and in last hour 30 questions so this is how you can finish a 100 marks exam in four hours so don't try to solve a lot of questions in your first hour because uh, you are like getting into the, that momentum of exam so it is not possible to solve 25 questions in first hour. it is very difficult okay so make sure you are able to solve 20 questions even if you are able to solve 20 questions in the first hour of the exam good enough okay so don't bother about uh like the time management part okay but 25 25 after that and 30 in the last fear management is done formula revision so if you are unable to recall formulas make sure you revise all the formulas just one day before exam or in the morning if you have the afternoon exam or even if you have the morning exam before exam revise all the formulas formula revision is generally problem or concern for the students when they are at home but i have never seen like at least i can say this with the 99 percent confidence i have never seen students who are complaining about they are unable to recall formulas in the examination when you are at home definitely you will face problem in formula revision uh, formula recall but in exam somehow your brain will provide you all those formulas which you learned understood at the time of preparation so don't bother about it but make sure if you are very uh, not so like the photographic memory type person revise your formulas one day before exam and also in the morning before going to exam then make sure you are relaxed enough okay relax as in not so relaxed but don't go into the panic mode say i'm not well prepared and so on so whatever you prepared prepared whatever is possible for you you did it you have to accept the reality and be, by accepting reality you can perform way better in examination than feeling guilty about yourself so don't be guilty about okay i haven't prepared say four chapters ten chapters doesn't matter okay so once you are in the examination your under preparation is like it happened okay you could have prepared 
before but if you haven't then it's fine no problem sit for exam appear for exam with full confidence and again one more thing if you are leaving or if you say left like uh, four five chapters in your syllabus it is not going to cost you an exam so don't worry about it. okay then mock test if you have four five days remaining for your exam appear for mock test if you have say one or two days remaining for exam don't appear for mock test okay so appearing for mock test two days before exam is not going to help you so avoid it if you score very low say assuming again you are very well prepared candidate ideally you should clear your exam but if uh, you appear for mock just one day before exam two three days before exam is still fine okay so you have that uh, buffer to calm yourself or uh, build your confidence again but if you score really low uh, say one day before exam you will panic naturally and automatically it will affect your exam so avoid mock test one day before exam or two days before exam then difficult topic testing so if you are trying to or if you are planning to leave some difficult topics just because they are difficult for you or you are feeling those topics as difficult for example a lot of students feel time series as difficult so remember one thing this is applicable for all the exams. This is not unique to FRM exam. So difficult topics are generally tested at surface level. The topics are easier. Okay. So uh, the questions are easier on the difficult topics. So even if you know uh, surface level information, you should be able to manage those questions. If you are unable to manage, that's fine because anyway, you are planning to uh, leave those topics, but making sure you understand those topics on surface level just by knowing the basics of those topics uh, you should be able to manage questions in the examination okay so make sure you are not dropping topics or you're leaving topics just because those topics are difficult for you if you are dropping topics because of time management that's fine no problem with that because time you can't add additionally but if you are leaving topics just because those are difficult make sure you at least prepare those topics on the surface level okay so that's all from my side all the best for your examination i hope you do really well in your exam and whatever is your feedback of exam like general experience without sharing any questions please share your feedback with me my contact number is here on the footer okay so thank you thank you for watching this video see you in the next video bye bye take care